between Democrats who believe Russia rigged the vote to elect Trump in 2016 and Republicans who believe various theories questioning Biden's electric victory, they all add up to what seems to be a bipartisan supermajority of Americans casting doubts about our elections. In fact, one prominent claim by some Trump supporters that a particular brand of voting machine switched Trump votes to Biden appears to have been plagiarized from the Democrat Party's playbook from the election of 2004. I heard from many left-leaning Iowans at the time who questioned President Bush's victory based on claims that a particular brand of voting machine switched votes in Ohio. That was 2004. It seems kind of similar, doesn't it, today? Those uh, totally unsubstantiated claims ultimately led Democrats to force a vote in a joint session of Congress in 2005 to reject Ohio's electric, electoral votes cast for President Bush. There are still Democrat members of Congress in both chambers who voted to overturn Ohio's state's certified election in 2004. Now, after the 2018 gubernatorial election in Georgia, the losing Democratic candidate refused to concede, claiming without evidence that would stand up in court that she, as that Democratic candidate for governor in Georgia, would have won, but for voting irregularities. Now, rather than distance itself from questioning a certified election in 2018, the Democratic Party invited her to speak at their convention, 2020. Two years later, the tables are now turned. Trump lost Georgia by a far smaller margin than that Democratic candidate for a governor in Georgia in 2018 did. But we're now told that to suggest that there was flaws in the 2020 Georgia election is somehow unacceptable and undermining democracy. It's pretty obvious after this history that we need to break the cycle of partisans questioning elections when their side lost. Or it's okay to complain when their side lost, but if the other side does the same thing, there's something wrong with it. So there's a lesson for both Republicans and Democrats. Both parties must stop finger pointing, stop blaming, and stop the partisan accusations. We all need to work together to restore Americans' faith in elections. So that brings me to something very current, because it's passed the House of Representatives. So that brings me to the Democrats' so-called For the People's Act. Incidentally, don't you find that name a little creepy? So often in history, when people claim to speak for the people, they were just seeking power. For the People's Act was introduced after the 2018 elections as a clear political statement to build the hyper-partisan narrative that Democrat defeats were due to widespread voter suppression. Now, we always hear about voter suppression before and since 2020 election, but just think of the historic turnout, not only the historic turnout that the losing candidate had, but the historic turnout that the winning candidate had. And yet we have voter suppression. 
H.R. 1 was then and remains a hastily cobbled together collection of every Democrat proposal for new election mandates. No care was taken to make it cohesive or workable. It is evident that state and local election officials were not consulted in this drafting. You know, just to consider the size of the bill, the Voting Rights Act of 1965, I think, was only two pages. For the People's Act, the bill introduced or heard before the Senate Rules Committee is 800 pages. Now, that bill that I just talked about had actually passed the House in 2019 on party lines and was placed directly on the Senate counter at Senator Schumer's request. Now, this is very typical of political messaging bills so the minority leader can force a vote to proceed. I assume in 2019 that Senator Schumer did not force the Senate vote to take up the bill because partisan activists got more traction out of blaming Leader McConnell for not bringing it up. Regardless, in 2019, it was clearly designed as a messaging bill and not one designed to ever get to the president's desk. Now, in 2021, we're back at it again. Considering a totally partisan messaging bill that would radically rework all states' election systems, where it's been in the Constitution the primary concern of the state legislatures and Congress seldomly intervening. I suppose the most obvious is that on a certain date in November, we all have presidential elections and congressional elections on the same date in all 50 states. But beyond that, it's pretty much up to each state how they want to conduct their elections. So how does this bill passing the House once again over here in the Senate, how does that jive with the message from Democrats just a couple months ago that state-run elections are beyond reproach. Don't you remember? Because all 50 states had state-certified elections, that gave Biden his win. Now, it's pretty common sense. Either state-run elections are fundamentally flawed and unfair, requiring massive federal intervention, and Americans that question the outcome are taking a moral stand, or state-run elections are by and large very fair, and Americans can have confidence in the outcomes. Either way, the same principle should apply to the last several elections. Whether Republicans or Democrats were relatively more successful in each case. I get it. I get it that having unleashed this partisan tar tiger, the bill that came from the House of Representatives, it's, the hard, it's very hard to get that partisan tiger back in the cage. But when this bill fails, as it must, we need to tamp down the partisan accusations and work across party, line, party lines to restore faith in American elections. Now, the way the environment here is in Washington and in Congress, it isn't going to be easy, but the alternative is unthinkable. <laughs>